Hey everybody, Shane LeHue, and I'm here with one of our Alabama rigs, umbrella rigs, whatever you guys want to use the term for this guy, and this is our Blades of Glory. Uh, this is a Shane's Baits Blades of Glory. You can see we have four blades on here. We make a another nine arm. This is a nine arm umbrella rig. We make one without blades. Um, you know, this this is a awesome fish catcher. It's really, really fun to throw. Uh, you know, when I'm back at home, I love throwing this thing, getting out in local tournaments and, and lobbing this thing around. And when I say lob it around, you know, that is one key for when you're throwing this thing. Don't overhand cast like you normally do. It's a sidearm cast. Uh, that way it's not rolling over on top of itself and you're not having any baits foul up. You know, most of the time when I cast this thing anymore, I very, very rarely ever have a bait or my line um, get tangled up in this rig. So it looks really heavy, but it's actually not. This is aluminum on the heads. Uh, you know, your typical umbrella rig when they first came out was made with lead and it was this big bulky thing that was really, really hard to throw. People were throwing it on 65 pound braid. Uh, I use 25 pound fluorocarbon, 100% fluorocarbon. The reason for that is I feel like if I get hung up in a brush pile or something like that, you know, typically I can, I can pull it out with that 25 pound, 100% fluorocarbon. So again, it's not very heavy. Um, I use, we make 16th ounce heads. So we make a 2 aught, a 3 aught, and a 5 aught. Obviously, if you're using some bigger baits, you know, go with the 5 aught hook. Uh, what I'm using, these are called the Deal. This is a Berkeley Power Bait, and these are, it's a unique deal. You know, typically we're used to seeing paddle tails, and paddle tails are obviously a great option. Uh, I throw a ton of Berkeley Power Swimmers, and most of the time I throw a 2.8 size, maybe a 3.3. Uh, you really don't want to go any uh, bigger than a 3.3 on this thing um, just because the tails tend to hang down like if you go to a 4.3 or a 4.8 you know it just gets a little long and honestly most of the fish in the lakes anymore you know they're chasing a lot of smaller shad and stuff like that and this thing just looks like a big ball of shad to them so I mean you're getting those fish to react. Now where I would throw this thing I've actually learned some new things this week on where I would throw it but um, Anywhere in the country that I've been where you're allowed to throw a nine arm or even a five arm umbrella rig, you know, they work phenomenally. So, and the Shane's baits, like I said, it's very, very lightweight. So you're not going to get worn out if you're going to go throw it all day. We do make a five arm uh, with and without blades. And then we make another five arm that actually has eight blades on it and bigger wires. So if you want to throw those really big swim baits, it's called the Shane's baits dominator. And again, it's got five arms, eight blades on it heavier gauge wire so if you want to go to those five inch swim baits or, or five inch baits you know with heavier heads on it you can and again it's still made out of aluminum so you're not the weight of the rig is not what it used to be like when they first came out like I said when it was made with lead so the key things I'm going to look for when throwing an umbrella rig is you know I, I keep an eye on my electronics you don't have to if you don't have electronics on your boat, you know, you can go fish around the bank with this thing and still still catch a lot of fish. Um, you know, Garmin Live Scope obviously with this umbrella rig helps me tremendously. I can see what depth I'm at. Um, I can count it down to fish. I can count it down to brush piles. So you don't have to be, have to have the electronics to go and do that. It obviously is very helpful, especially Garmin Live Scope um, if you're fishing some cover with this thing so you know where to keep it above um, whatever you're fishing obviously so you don't get hung you know there is nine nine hooks on this thing you are going to get hung up every now and then and I still even do even looking at live scope because tr you try to get it as close to the cover as you possibly can uh, you know you can fish this thing off the bank you don't have a boat or you got a kayak you know like I said it's not it's not terribly hard to cast it doesn't wear you out all day so you can do that if you want to and as far as when I'm going to throw it, you know, there's a lot of options. This has been kind of deemed a fall wintertime bait. And for me, that's not true. You know, if you get out on like, let's say the Tennessee River or something like that, and you get out on those ledge fish, you know, you can catch them in the summertime on this thing, uh, fish and ledges and things like that. Winter and fall are going to be the optimal times to throw it, I would say, just because bait fish starts moving a lot. Uh, fish start feeding on a lot of bait fish. Um, it's that's just typical and this you, that's what you're kind of trying to match um, with the umbrella rig is you're trying to match a school of bait fish so definitely get around you know if you know where any bait is in your lakes use your electronics to find that but like I said you can fish it from 
all year round pretty much. Um, the only time you might not catch some is when they're all on the bed on the lake. But it works even in the summertime. It's not just a wintertime bait anymore. I've caught a lot of fish. You know, when you get on those offshore schools, let's say, uh, where you're throwing a big crankbait or a big worm, something like that, you know, you can come back through those fish with this thing or even start with this and catch a ton of those fish. So you don't have to just focus it as a wintertime fall bait. You know, get out there in the summer and give it a shot. Again, I use 16th ounce heads and I can, I can fish this thing in 25 feet of water or I can fish it in two feet of water. Uh, it's just, that's all depending on the cadence of your retrieve. Um, typically with an umbrella rig, you know, I'll go with a slow, steady retrieve, especially if I'm on cold water. Now we've been catching some schooling fish on this and you know, they're higher in the water column. So obviously I'm burning it. Uh, I typically throw a Revo STX and I throw a 7.3 to one because if I do happen to see a fish, you know, break the surface or something like that, I can speed it up. And with a 7.3 to 1, I can still wind it slow enough to where I can keep it down there in 25 feet of water on a long cast. So 7.3 to 1 Abu Garcia STX is my go-to. I already mentioned the 25 pound, 100% fluorocarbon. And I like fluorocarbon just because I can make those really long casts. And I feel like I don't have as much stretch as I would with a mono. And when I set the hook, you know, a lot of times you set the hook on braid uh, really far out there and it wants to bind up in your reel so your next cast is, is kind of botched because you got that where you uh, tighten down on that fish with the braid, you know, your next cast is going to be going to be an issue. So 100% fluorocarbon, 25 pound is a great way to go. And I throw a 7.6 medium heavy rod with a 9 arm. And if I'm throwing just a or 5 arm, it's almost like throwing like a half ounce spinnerbait or something like that. When you put 16th ounce heads on it, it's not very heavy. So it's almost like you're, I can roll cast it under dock walkways and things like that with a five arm. Um, I'll throw a seven foot or seven foot two inch jig rod, just nothing crazy. Again, a seven three to one reel and 25 pound fluorocarbon. If you want to, you can go down to 17 on that one. Um, I throw a lot of 17 pound fluorocarbon just cause it's easier to cast in like those tight places. Like I talked about, if you're fishing some shallow cover, uh, with a Shane's Bates five arm, uh, you can, you know, fish in that tight cover and make those better casts with 17 or 20 pound fluorocarbon. Now, for this, you can actually change out the arms on this rig. So, you know, you hear people um, breaking arms off umbrella rigs and things like that, and then you got to throw the whole rig away. This cap actually twists off. You just take a pair of pliers, twist that cap off, and you can actually switch out the arm so you don't have to throw the whole umbrella rig away uh, when you, if you do break an arm. And there's little slots in here where it makes this rig, the arms last a lot longer. We've been fishing it this week, and I've actually probably caught two, three hundred fish on one in, you know, four or five days. And... I finally, I'll be honest, finally broke an arm, but it took that many fish and I'd actually use that rig at home for a month uh, and no telling how many fish I caught in a month on it, um, fishing tournaments back home. So it was the same rig tied up. But the cool thing was I didn't have to throw it all away. I just made a quick change. You know, we, we sell the arms pre-done pre for you. So all you have to do is put them back in there, screw the cap back on, you're right back to, to going back to fishing. So it, it's a pretty quick process. You don't have to sit there and rig up a whole new umbrella rig. So all these are available on shanesbaits.com. You know, definitely check them out. They work well all over the country. Uh, we're, you know, seeing a lot of people catch fish on umbrella rigs again. It kind of faded away a little bit and now it's really coming back by storm. Um, and I, again, I love throwing this thing. I know people have their opinions on it, but to me it's, it's just, it's one of the best bites in the world to me is catching one on a rig. So check us out at shanesbaits.com. Thank you.